Welcome back to Scruffy Tales and today's short video about why I think the A10 sucks. The A10, the legendary aircraft that can destroy anything while taking a beating like no other aircraft. The gun that had an aircraft built around it. The ultimate close air support platform. The pinnacle of tank busting weaponry. Except, is it? During the Gulf War, the A-10 would be put to the test against a third-rate army relying on technology from the 70s. The A-10 would be sent in to do gun runs against enemy tanks as intended. There was only one problem. The A-10 was taking too many hits. The risk of being shot down was too great. Not unsurprising, considering the A-10 is slow, it is big, and it is easy to follow on radar. It's a perfect target, in other words. Military nerds online will at this point scream at the screen that the A-10 was built to take a hit, that it is intended to be able to be shot at and still carry on with the mission. Sounds good, doesn't it? Except, that's not how things work in reality. If you get shot at and you get hit, you have messed up. Getting hit is something you always try to avoid. So, during the Gulf War, what did the US Armed Forces do when the A-10 was being shot at? They scrapped the gun runs and instead swapped to missiles. The A-10 would then go on to rack up an impressive amount of tank kills. But it wasn't because of its gun, and it wasn't because it flew in close and low. It was because it launched missiles at great range where it could not get shot at. This means that it wasn't the A-10 doing all the killing, but the missiles. Missiles you can put on any number of aircraft. So, what is the point of the A-10 in that case? Its gun is essentially useless against any army with 70s technology, never mind more modern stuff. And the gun was the whole thing with this aircraft. The plane itself was built around the gun to make the gun fly. Seems like the aircraft is a pretty big failure, considering it cannot perform in its intended task, using its intended weapon. Instead, it relies on missiles like any other aircraft. Now, military nerds will scream that the A-10 has proved itself invaluable as a close air support aircraft in Afghanistan, helping troops on the ground with dealing with troublesome enemies. It's a morale boost for ground troops hearing the A-10 sweep in and then listening to the classic Bird of the main gun. It excels in the cast role. Except, does it? In Afghanistan, the enemy had no way of shooting back at the A-10. You brought in a 30mm autocannon with rotating barrels to fight farmers with AK-47s. Are we surprised that the A-10 worked well in that scenario? The Soviets did very well against Afghani farmers with their hind gunships as well, until the CIA provided those Afghani farmers with Stinger missiles. Slow-moving CAS aircraft have a tendency to get shot down as soon as the enemy has some proper equipment. Iraq proved it against the A-10. The Afghanis proved it against the hind gunship. So. Outside of Afghanistan, where will the A-10 perform as intended? Africa, maybe? In Ukraine? Where Russian and Ukrainian CAS aircraft have been shot down left and right? The A-10 doesn't work. There are plenty of aircraft that can launch a missile. You don't need an A-10 for that. And performing CAS missions against farmers? Do you really need a highly specialized anti-tank minigun in its own tailor-made jet to deal with farmers.
that's it. Uh, that's all I have to say on uh, this topic, at the moment at least. Do you disagree with me? Leave a comment and don't hold back. And uh, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.